It's April the 25th, 2024, and today there were oral arguments in the United States Supreme Court in Donald Trump versus United States of America, 23939, in which Donald Trump is requesting presidential immunity for some things he did uh, concerning January 6th. Now, in this particular video, we're going to listen to Justice Elena Kagan, Kagan's arguments, which I thought were quite uh, nonsensical. All right, let's go ahead and give her a listen. Analysis or even the Fitzgerald analysis that we've been talking about. How about if a president um, orders the military to stage a coup? Uh, I think that, as the Chief Justice pointed out earlier, where there is a whole series of, uh, you know, sort of guidelines against that, so to speak, like the UCMJ for, prohibits the military from following a plainfully unlawful act. If one adopted Justice Alito's test, that would fall outside. Now, if one adopts, for example, the Fitzgerald test that we advance, that might well be an official act, and he would have to be, as I'll say in response to all these kinds of hypotheticals, uh, has to be impeached and convicted before he can be criminally prosecuted. But I emphasize to the court that— Well, he's gone, let's say, this president who ordered the military to stage a coup— He's no longer president. He wasn't impeached. He couldn't be impeached. Um, but, but he ordered the military to stage a coup, and you're saying that's an official act. Uh, I think it would depend that's on— That's immune. I, I think it would depend on the circumstances, whether it was an official act. If it were an official act, again, he would have to be impeached. Well, what does that mean, depend on the circumstances? He was the president. He um, uh, is the commander-in-chief. Um, he talks to his generals all the time. And he told the generals, I don't feel like leaving office. I want to stage a coup. Is, is, is that immune? If, if it's an official. All right, so there are several problems with um, Justice Kagan's uh, hypothetical as far as staging a coup. And one is she invites an assumption that our military service members are stupid and that they would actually go up against their own government. But two, um, Congress pays our service members. There is no way that a president can, you know, order a coup against uh, that which pays him. And let's keep going. So here I've copied the uh, U.S. Army's uh, oath of commissioned officers, and since I do have uh, some experience. It says, I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter. So help me God. And here you have it. There is no way that the president can order a coup because it's against the... Um, the oath of office. No commander would ever order a coup or could ever follow a coup because it's against his oath of office. And two, Congress pays uh, the DOD and all of the military services. The DOD does not pay itself. It's absolutely silly to even instigate that a president could uh, order any uh, commander to stage a coup. It's um, indicative of the illiteracy of our uh, educational system and how uh, anybody can make their way to uh, the top of government, including a uh, Supreme Court justice. And so this is a thank you for all of the United States military members and those who work with, um, for, with and for all of uh, DOD to even, uh, you know, Put your life on the line so people like um, Justice Kagan can sit up there and call you stupid in front of the whole world. Um, I'm going to end this video right here. If you appreciated this particular content, I want you to like the video and leave me a comment down in the comment section. Thank you.